What's up guys, it's Mr. Janvin and today we are back on the Pokemon Showdown server. Pokemon Showdown is back. And before we begin, I'm going to have a little moment here. So I'm probably going to have a timestamp saying when the battles begin. So, been thinking, I'm kind of cleaning my house right now. And I abruptly stopped because I was watching a video. Shout outs to Impact Theory. If you guys, um, if you guys watch it, I love, I just love learning from older people. I don't know why. Maybe that's just a me thing, but I, I genuinely, um, you know, I fear making, I guess you could call it a fear. I don't like making mistakes. I'll admit that. It, it's part of the process, but I can't, I'd be lying if I said I enjoyed making them. Um, so I like to learn from a lot of older people, and they'll, <clears throat> one thing, if you want to befriend any older person, you know, and I've done this several times. I know it's off topic. Just listen, and I told I tell you they'll give you anything. They'll offer you any opportunity. Just show up there, shut the fuck up, and listen, and don't make old jokes. <laughs> yeah, listen to Jan, watch the videos. Um, but but yeah, you know that made me. You know it was an interview with um Ray Dolly, I believe his name is, and it, it kind of brought me back to a comment I received recently. If you notice, um, I asked you guys, what do you what comes to your mind first when you think of my channel, right? And in that, I, I, you, I, you know, I received a ton. I even called out those who were passive. I'm like, you know, even you. Like, I, I really, this is important. And the reason for that is I was watching a video on branding, and then I started to think, the, the guy said, you know, branding is not just what you want it to be, but also what people perceive it to be. And the Jamvab brand has been around for quite some time, so I wanted to see what the general consensus was. So that was my motive for leaving that. And you guys left pretty pretty much aligned which i was grateful for um but i didn't i guess i didn't realize the degree to which you guys perceive me as like educational or informative those words were pretty much the combination of educational and informative was in every comment pretty much and team stealing teams <laughs> but um yeah so that that really brought some insight to things and you should switch out that charizard that's the old team but i'll get into that in a sec um and I have to ask you guys, are you afraid of being wrong? But for real, like, are you afraid of being wrong? You may be like, nah, da, da, da. But, but think about it, right? I, if, if you've purchased my book, that it goes through every bit of how, what it's going to take to get good at this, um, it has it all in there, right? Um, I wrote one book before. And to me, it was inadequate because it wasn't properly aligned. And it, it doesn't have a lot of the information that's in the new book, right? So if you've read that new book or you could go on Amazon and read a preview, I believe it goes up to that point. In the beginning chapters, I discuss mindset. And because you guys watch me for the informational part, like education, all that stuff on Pokemon... You know, I feel like I hit me that I'm, I'm probably doing a disservice because in the book I mentioned mindset and how important that is going into it, which you probably brushed over. You're like, oh, what the fuck is Jam talking about? But you will suck or not necessarily suck, but you'll never get to the level that you could get to if you don't take heed of that one. And I'm speaking from personal experience. That whole book is on personal experience and, you know, me coaching other people. Are you afraid of being wrong? Meaning... When you lose, when you fuck up, do you retreat? Do you be careful of your thoughts? Do you think, oh, it was because of, and if it's because of anything other than the statement, because I didn't play well enough, then, you know, there are times, I'll get it to this, there are times where the opponent, you know, will hacks you or, but, it's always better to put it on yourself because then you can do something about your own actions. You can't do something about hacks or your opponent misplaying and benefiting from it. You can't do anything about that. So playing a way where you can't, where that won't happen again. But are you afraid of being wrong? You know? If you say no, then, you know, why do you quit after four losses? And why do you start... All those, all I'm saying is you're wrong in some area of this game, therefore you're losing. So if you don't fear being wrong, you should be more excited about the losses. Now, that's not how humans work, but you should try to get as close to that as possible. And that's my mindset nugget for today. Um, not to say these are going to be common, uh, but it's on my mind. Um, I def I'm back in the process. Right now, I feel like I'm about about 50% skill. I just 
As great as these videos seem as my playing level, I hopped on the ladder to train because I do that whenever I'm trying to come back because I'm going to be releasing a lot of team building videos. When I come back and I want to just, I didn't want to just release team building videos based off theory. I'm going to go the grid of the ladder. I'm going to fight everybody. I might, the, the dude that's number one with the name you don't know might be me on some alt, right? But the point is I don't like giving out information based off theory all the time. Sometimes I will. Um, but in this case, I want to make sure that I've actually played hundreds, maybe a battle, know the metagame before I give you guys a team and give you instructions on how to properly team build. Coming soon around every month. Um, so yeah, I was doing that and it dawned on me, I'm like, I'm feeling apprehensive. And I mentioned this in the book that you're going to have a feeling of apprehension sometimes because you realize, you now realize <clears throat> that there's a possibility that you losing will occur and that will then show you that you have a lot more to deal with than you thought you have a lot more improvement to make than you thought which is should be exciting it's just the way you think about it um and when i feel that within me i'm like okay i got a lot of work to do i've gotten comfortable and again i think i'm about 50 percent have games where i'm still good but but i know what i can be because I've been there several times. This has happened several times throughout the year where I slack off, don't play too much Pokemon. When I come back, my awareness is low if you know what the three pillars are from the book. And um, yeah, so if if you're afraid of being wrong, you need to change that. You lose, go back in the ring. Go back in the ring. Go back in the ring. Now, that doesn't mean mindlessly playing. There are principles to this. But I can't obviously discuss all the principles in a video. So we're gonna go. Um, that's it. Um, I don't remember who passed me this tailwind, with tailwind team. I remember it being pretty bad. It's pretty bad, um, and I lost several times in it with a live I tried to record back when Dynamax was a lot. I was like, "Damn it, it's really weak to a lot of things." Um, let's get roost. Does not get roost. What else does it get? But yeah, it's really weak to a lot of things. I have Solar Beam on here, which I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, let's put. Let us put, there's no heat train for earthquake. Let's put protect on here. In case those darns feeling themselves, we mess somebody up. Um, but yeah, man, uh, Dynamax is gone. So we have a fresh metagame. I know that was a bit ranty, uh, but, but I, you know, fucking man. If you don't have the attention span to listen to that, you're lost. Uh, that's free information that I put in books and coaching sessions level, but I'm like, if I really want the community to get better, can I, is it fair for me to withhold that, to j reserve it to just that? I don't fucking know, man. Um, fuck it. Let's, let's get into the game. Um, and if I suck, <laughs> I need to improve. Mm, so let's do the left to right analysis. Corsola guards well. It's a defensive Pokemon, so you determine what kind of Pokemon it is. If it's defensive, generally you want to ask what it guards against. So Corsola guards against Excadrill. And it guards against Cinderace, the new sprite. And it guards against the Mimikyu. And the Cafagrius thing, somewhat. Um, offensively, it's not going to do too much because it's so offensive Pokemon. So, Zatu is Choice Scarf. Um, I guess you could consider it offensive. It's just kind of like a gimmicky Pokemon. Um, but but what does it have to offer? Um, it doesn't pick up any KOs, but the trick can be useful because his Zatu switch will likely be Clefable. Um, Dracovish destroys him with Tailwind up. So Zatu plus Tailwind, that's the strategy we can use. Mandibuzz, defensive Pokemon, meaning it guards well against, um, really just the Kafaragus. It hard wall is that, but everything else does decently versus it. So we're going to be mindful of that. Can take a hit from Excadrill and, um, 1v1 that if I need to. Gastrodon guards well against... Oh, Gastrodon is cursed, so he can actually win. I forgot about that. And Charizard um, is an offensive Pokemon. It's fire moves, um, hit everything neutrally or super effectively, except Hydreigon, and that can get Hurricane or Focus Blast. So now that we've determined that, what is our game plan? My game plan is to sweep him with my Gastrodon. What do I need to do to achieve that? I need to get Hydreigon low. How do I get Hydreigon low? I'll probably have to have it in versus Mandibuzz or Charizard, seeing as it's only fire resist. So, all that being said, I'm going to leave off, lead off with my Mandibuzz because it's the most difficult Pokemon for him to deal with. 
Um, this allows me to foul play this right off the bat. Now, remember my game plan is to weaken that Hydreigon. Clefable or Hydreigon are likely to rear their ugly head here because nothing switches in well on a dark type foul play. Now, I led with Mandibuzz as a means of protection because on lead, what you the lead the thing you don't want to have happen is you know Willow is oh that's not good. Uh, it's it's not good because of the Amanda Buzz. Um, but if push comes to shove, I can handle. Um, oh, he had stealth rocks on this. I mean, I didn't think he'd go. I didn't think he'd just. So he's throwing away his his Reunigus or whatever that thing is called. Reun Regis Regis. And um, obviously, I can't stand here now. Again, I'm trying to build up towards that end game of the of the um, the Hydreigon. So, you know, we've already identified that Corsula does a lot of work to his team. Um, Clefable, I'm not sure what they're running now that Dynam Dynamax is gone. But let's assume that he is the Life Orb um, set. Spadef Gastrodon will comfortably chew whatever. Um, and it seems to be Life Orb. So we're going to recover here. We need to have made sure that this is at, <clears throat> not at necessary, yeah, at full at all times. Um, that way when we begin to set up. Um, it's not do too big a deal, and the reason we need Hydreigon Lord is because Hydreigon tends to run nasty plot, and it can beat me before I can beat him. So I'm gonna recover here, and there goes the Hydreigon, the thing we wanted to see, and it's very likely that the opponent's gonna go for the nasty plot here, which I'm open to. But if he chooses to go for something else, like showing say specs, that's actually good. Actually, it's it's good and bad, um, because then he can dark pulse. Um, and that's a problem. But he goes for the nasty plot as expected. And what I'm gonna do, Hurricane and Focus Blast are both both inaccurate. Um, I'm gonna Focus Blast and hit him. So conditions have been met. Conditions have been met. The Hydreigon is at a range where if my Gastrodon goes for the curse, it dies to waterfall. So I can go to Zatu because Zatu is generally slower. He's gonna stand right. So that was a bait. And we U turn out, so the conditions have been met. There should be nothing he can do to prevent this sweep um, other than burn me with his Reun thingy. Um, so, what I'm going to do is now that we identified that it seemed was only um, the, the only thing that could take me on was um, the Hydreigon. The only thing that could take on Corsola was the Hydreigon as well. Uh, for the most part, Clef hurts too. And now is the question is, what do we want to bait in? If I go to Drake, um, Dracovish, Dracovish allows Mimikyu in. And is that something I want to have in? No. If I go to um, Corsola, Corsola invites Clefable. Is that something I can deal with? Yes. Um, if I go Mandibuzz, it invites Clefable or Mimikyu. And if I go Gastrodon, it invites could divide Mimikyu, but Mimikyu is something I don't want in right now because Mimikyu is still a threat. So we're going to go to Corsola in an attempt to lure out the um, <laughs> Clefable. And it's funny that he says RIP Dynamax because I had the Dynamax itch. I have, I still have, I don't know if this happens to you guys as well, but I, I kind of expect Dynamax or I expect the Z moves. And it, it's so funny to me. Um, so. What I'll do here is Nightshade. Actually, I'll strength sap to see what he'll do. Uh, I should have Nightshaded. He's probably just going to go Clef anyway. He goes Ryun. Um, this is good because now I can go to Zatu if he chooses to Stealth Rock. So he, he gives me Stealth Rock, kinda. And the reason I say kinda is because now um, his his thing can Court Change. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure I count Court Change interacts with Magic Bounce, but we're sure as hell going to find out today. As I'm gonna fire off a, tr I'm gonna fire off a trick, um, because I did expect Clefable to come in, and this is a huge trick right here. Because now, Dracovish is free, and the Clefable can no longer handle my Gastrodon, so I'm free to go to that. Um, Moonblast will be doing significantly less. He's now locked into a Choice Scarf, and I can go for Waterfall here, um, which is a pretty safe play. He can't recover. Um, that waterfall was to guard against Ryun, um, but he seems to be staying in. We're going to waterfall again. I do believe he's going to go to the Ryun um, soon, but he's choosing to just allow me to KO his Clefable. Uh, goes to Mimikyu, though. Okay. And this is this is a potential threat, so we're going to go hard to Corsola. The one thing we know can guarantee take a hit from Swords Dance, 
and what we're gonna do here is fire off a will-o-wisp um, if this misses oh you miss shadow cloud got disabled uh, so we connect with the will-o-wisp but we still got the curse body anyway we already have rocks so the Mimikyu has been neutralized which is why I allowed Corsola I didn't allow Corsola to take a ton of damage I just used it to bait out the Clefable so yeah, I know it's like, jam. how can you say you're 50% when you're da 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 I will say my I'm better when I'm narrating because it forces me to heighten my awareness. But when I'm playing by myself, which is going to you know, be the case when I'm playing in tour. So I'll say when I'm recording, I'm at like 70%. Maybe. Um, it's a fairly straightforward game, which is why I'm saying that it was 70%. Um, but we're getting back to 100, baby. And I'll keep the battles in the lies like, top tier so 1900 plus 2000s and um, that way it's just better um, since that's what my brand is I'm gonna give you more of that so um, just drink sap here play rough that should not me out um, he still has his substitute uh, so what I'm gonna do is mm, 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 mm. I want to entice him to not Swords Dance again because Play Rough is still a threat. He doesn't need Shadow Claw. Play Rough is still a problem. Um, and he doesn't, his item hasn't been broken yet. So, um, if I U turn out and he Swords Dances again. So, what I'm thinking is. Draco Vish is slower, obviously. Man, the bus can take a hit. What I'm going to actually end up doing, I have two choices, right? I could go to Gastrodon hard and curse, or I could go to Man, the bus, U turn. And what this is going to do is if he attacks me, takes life orb, takes the, 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 um, the disguise breaking damage, and he takes burn damage. But more importantly, if he chooses to Swords Dance again, he's taking burn plus life orb every turn. Gastrodon um, versus a burnt Mimikyu can do a lot better and I still want to make sure I have a win condition so he chooses to play rough instead which is great that's better for me because now I break his substitute takes the 8% or the 12% from the sub breaking and now I can position Gastrodon so he has five Pokemon and I have four really I have even less than that from the looks of it um, and I I'm gonna curse because it protects me um, I'm pretty sure he's just gonna attack uh, pretty sure he's just gonna attack the reason cursing I'm like eh, is because because it allows Ryun, Ryun Regis gonna recover here uh, he's just gonna try to go for some damage um, that first one would have hurt just based on how much that still did 40% to me so that would have done a ton to me um, because he dies to burn here I'm allowed to recover and this baits in the Ryun I'm actually, I might be faster than, hmm. Right, so he's gonna go to this and it's gonna lure him in to go for Will-O-Wisp. I counter burn him because he's a physical attacker. <laughs> you know we gotta miss. Um, but at this point, Psychic is unguardable. Um, he goes to Clefable and I'm gonna just Tailwind and just Dracovish end him instead. Um, yeah, we'll Tailwind here. Uh... I forgot that rapid spin. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we U turn here. We're faster. Um, then we'll sack Amanda Buzz. He speeds. Ah, oh, fuck. He can't knock out my Draco Vish, which is what's most important. But uh, I forgot about that. And then um, Gastron beats the last two. So he needed a boost, an attack boost. Um, as he um, he gave me wandering spirit not that that matters uh, at all yeah not that that matters at all and Gastrodon beats the rabbit um, yeah because if he's like high jump kick or something I beat that um, sucker punch huh Dang. so Draco fish swept without trying to sweep um, the boy fishy is rent man so if you paid attention, you notice the end game didn't go with it. Didn't it? Didn't I didn't win with what I thought I was gonna win with, or what I said I was gonna win with, rather. And that's because other win conditions happen. You can plan. It's here's the thing with planning Pokemon. You you want to have a roadmap, obviously. 
because it's just a smart thing to do um there's just no debate about that it's better to go in with a plan than not to go in with a plan um but you can never tell what the opponent will do. So if you needed, for example, the opponent gave me Hydreigon early, they could have very well not given me Hydreigon early. If they knew what I knew, they probably would have valued Hydreigon more, but they didn't. I also could have missed Focus Blast. I could have been what he's banking on. So if I missed Focus Blast there, it would have put me in a bad spot. I'd have to tailwind with Zatsu and, you know, U-Turn with Man, like it would have put me in a really bad spot. Uh, but I just, this team, actually, the reason I didn't use it is because it kept losing the Dynamax Hydreigon. It was just Nancy Plot and Dynamax, and I couldn't do anything. It would literally 6 all these guys. Everything died. And Mandibus can only U-turn, and Gastrodon is walled. So, like, and you know, Z focus. I mean, Dynamax uh, fire move did nothing to it. I'm um, fighting move did nothing to it. So, you just sweep this team. Uh, now that Dynamax doesn't exist... They can't do random shit like that. So he can't randomly Dynamax, uh, which isn't that random. He had to. Um, but he just gets a boost for no fucking reason. Though the team should have been better prepared. But that's aside. Rambling aside. Yo, Corsola guards well against... Defensive Pokemon, I remember, so it guards well against the... Um, this thing. I keep wanting to call it Arachne. Galissapod. It might guard decently against, believe it or not the Dragapult if it's physical but beyond that um, there's nothing I'd really throw it in on um, it kind of loses to everything else so it's not that value the subjective value is very low Zatu Choice Scarf um, I'd like to get rid of that as soon as possible he only has one Psychic Resistant Aegis Slash so you know me neutralizing that would be very helpful um, particularly for uh, Draco Vishri I think he's going to be clicking crunch a lot in this game uh, um, Draco Vish, decent if I kill Seismitoad early. Um, Tailwind plus Draco Vish, you know, Aegis Slash not being able to King Shield goes a long way. Man, the Buzz defensive Pokemon guards was against Aegis Slash and Draco Vish, the, maybe. Gastrodon, Draco Vish, maybe. Uh, Gastrodon is my primary mind. It's 6 Ozum. Um, but I gotta worry about Will O Wisp and I gotta worry about Toxic from Seismitoad. So uh, we're gonna see how that's gonna play out. Um, and Charizard is just a nuke. The nuke versus his team. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to lead off with my some my game plan. I didn't formulate a game plan. That was a mistake on my end. I went into there and chose the lead. That was a mistake. Should have formulated how I'm gonna achieve what I want. So, end game wise, um, there's no real sweeping. I don't think that's gonna go down. Um, because I don't really have a sweeper. So I'm gonna have to just. I'm maybe I'll just this is gonna be a close called a blow for blow where it's not really a sweeping kind of game it's more of just position you yourself better than the opponent to get as more value than them um, for example I position myself better on the lead I'm likely gonna take 30% from this Rotom or this Seismitoad bingo and this is important because one I got I get the burn but it's also important because I know he's gonna scald here right because my Zatu is there uh, and what I can do is fire for Hurricane, potentially, if I hit. Um, if I don't, so he doubles the Aegis Slash, anticipating me to double to Zatu. And now, be just because of positioning, I'm getting a ton of value. Now, these aren't his best plays, but that doesn't change the fact. So there's that about 30%, assuming I hit, I get from the Rotom. I'm going to protect here. I'm running protect on this. Again, I put it on the middle of the video. Uh, for choice users like these, because I'm he's gonna double switch anticipating my Gastrodon. He's gonna Willow Wisp or he's gonna trick. If he Willow Wisps, he's likely not choice. He vol switched. Um I can't risk him being so here's an important note. If he's not choice, then he's gonna go for Willow Wisp here trying to catch my Gastrodon. Um do we want Gastrodon burnt? Of course not, because it beats these four members when it curses. Um, and if this doesn't have Willow Wisp, it beats it as well. So what I'm going to do is do a mid-ground. I'm going to go to, remember that useless Pokemon we were discussing earlier? Corsola. So you Willow Wisp there. It's not useless, but it's not that great. And what this allows is for me to go for my Stealth Rock. Um, we've identified that he has Vol Switch and Willow Wisp. It's, it's really unlikely that he has Nasty Plot. Um, unless he's running Nasty Plot, no Vol Switch. I mean Nasty Plot, no Thunderbolt. Which is possible. Um, but 
if the worst he can do to me here is overheat. I have 355 Spadef, I'm no joke. So I'll just tank it and strength sap back because his moves will be halved. So um, now my Charizard is gonna become a real, real problem. And now I'm gonna go to my Zatu as he doubles to Aegislash. We discussed this earlier. I have no fear of this Aegislash unless it's rocking um, Head Smash. So really the best play here is for me to go to Gastrodon. Um, and it would make sense if Aegislash did have Rock, Slash, Rock Smash if his if his um, Dragapult is physical because you want to lure in Mandibuzz, hit it with a Rock Head Smash, and then you... So what I'm going to do is go to Gastron. It does two things, right? If he's special in Shadow Balls, I eat. If he Head Smashes, bingo. I, knew that I resist that, neutralize that, and I'm able to recover here. So he looks like he's banded. That head smash did way too much. I know his base 150, but I'm pretty sure that's banded. Um, I'm able to curse here, unless this is packing. It's probably just another life work clef. And what this does is forces him to go into one of his status mons, Seismic Toad. So you see how it seems as if I'm like 10 turns ahead of him? That's just because I had a plan. So I'm not reacting to my opponent. I'm playing proactively. I already know what's going to happen. I already know what I want to happen. And now he's probably going to go to Clefable because Age of Slash coming in likely dies to two psychics um, whereas Clefable doesn't so I'm gonna trick my our item away here he actually goes to Rotom which is a heavy duty boost Rotom which is actually great for my um, that's great for my Gastrodon and it's also really good for um, it's really good for my Gastrodon and it's really bad for his Rotom um, what am I trying to say good great for Gastrodon because I don't have to worry about him switching up moves um, so I'm actually going to hard switch to Corsla here. I do believe he's going to Volt Switch. Um, but for me to U-turn there, because him will always be made perfect sense. Because if I stayed in and U-turn, then he switched back out. I mean, he doesn't get counter burnt. If, he go, if I go Gastrodon, because I've shown that I'm cursed, he can't have that coming in multiple times because it sweeps him. So this puts me in a great spot because at this point, Corsla's main switchings are going to be um, either Aegis Slash... Clefable. Um, so Zard is free there. Um, I mean, I'm a fire type too. Uh, and I'm going to go right back to Zatu because Zatu's core purpose is point to keep rocks off the field. Keep them off the field. Because if I miss, I go for, if I foolishly go for Hurricane there and miss, he gets rocks up, which gives him a lot of momentum. So this is a phenomenal position for me because he either chooses to Volt Switch, right? He either chooses to Volt Switch, but he's heavy duty boots. I've been, hmm. He can't. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to go for Willow Wisp, but I have no reason to ever go to Gastrodon. He only has two more switchings left. Um, he doubles to Dracapult, and it's leftovers, meaning um, this can only go for. This can only go for Substitute and. What's it called? Yeah, it's Substitute, which means Mandibuzz 1v1s this. So I could have went for Nightshade. But I'd let him disappear and all that. So you see, he dragon darted because he can't touch me. Um, I roost here as he goes to Clefable most likely. And I'll wall him forever. I go to Gastrodon. I'll wall him all day as long as he doesn't crit me. And, you know, obviously I won't be one him. I'm recovering first to make sure I can always switch back into the Clef. And now look at that. Both of his status minds, the only things that can take on my Gastrodon are about to go down. As I'm pretty sure he's going to Volt Switch here. He will always. Okay, that's it for his. He has no hazard control. That's it for his Rotom. So I'm free to Strength Sap here. It's a free Strength Sap, so why not? Um, we've confirmed that Edge Slash is likely banded, which means it can't switch in here. It loses to um, Corsula. Um, we confirmed the, the Dracopult is physical. So he's likely going to go into Clefable. Um, it's the least drawback. And I'm pretty sure my opponent feels very helpless. This is how Pokemon is supposed to be played. So I was played like. It even greater level than this when I'm really a hundred percent and again a hundred percent he was a hundred percent a lot today my fault bros it is absolutely liberating when you can take full responsibility this is nothing that there's nothing here that you can't learn that's why I all wrote it in a book like I want you to know this um there was a time where I wanted to keep all my secrets to myself I wanted to you know, oh, I don't want anybody else knowing the stuff I'd be doing. Da, 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 da. But I, that's that's no longer my motive. And I had a guy comment, you know, because I've mentioned before, like, 
and how about potentially leave YouTube? And you know, he had a comment. He didn't. I don't think he he was ill willed. And I, I did give him a response. I didn't try to to you know like attack him or um, he's probably gonna go for um, it's likely gonna go for. I wonder what he has. I'm gonna go course low. He might have spikes. I don't mind spikes. I just don't want rocks up. Um, close call. Ooh! Ooh! Somebody stop me, man. So we're gonna give him emergency. Oh, you give me seismic. You gave me 100% off seismic. 100 HP off seismic. So, man, that's gastrodial. So he's gonna scald here. I could stay in just to flex. He has to scald because I keep going into Zatu. Um, I could stay in just to flex. He doubles the Aegis Slash. Doesn't really gain him a lot of ground. Um, when Seismitoe goes down, then we're gonna Tailwind Dracovish. Uh, but yeah, we just U turn out here. Actually, no, I don't want to take um, so I'm not Shadow Sneak damage. Uh, so Iron Head's anticipating. He anticipated my my Mandibles to come in. So we get to Strength Tap here. Assuming I don't get flinched, we're gonna get back up to full as we get flinched. Um, so at this point, you want to hold a position that cannot be defended. Um, I'm not gonna go to Zard because I can miss. Though I do resist Iron Head, We've confirmed banned most likely. Um, but I also want to force a kill, so I have to go Zard. That was an unfortunate miss because Corsola was nice to have. But I force a kill here, so one status mon gone. Um, it's gonna be a little harder to switch into Galissapod, but I don't think it'll matter too much. Uh, so right here, he's gonna Thunderbolt. You don't go Clef on Charizard unless you're gonna Thunderbolt. Um, and I get to Curse here, starting to scare him, forcing that Seismitoe back in for another round of rocks. I really should Earthquake here to just kill it. Um, I'll Earthquake here. It's unguardable. Um, fuck, there's the crit he was praying for. I should have recovered there, in all honesty, man. Um, because he was clearly hacks fishing. I'll go Zard here. If he Thunderbolts, I'm open to losing Zard. Um, he gets a special attack drop. Fuck. Um, fuck. That's bad. I'll go double the Dracovish here. Because um, I know he's going to switch. I didn't expect him to switch to Seismitoad. But that works out perfectly because I get to Psychic Fang here. Uh, if he chooses to stay in, which he probably will, that means Dracovish can now fish his Ren once I Tailwind up. Or just fish his Ren, period. Um, it's going to be pretty hard for him to win. I'm not sure why he went Aegis Slash. Um, perhaps he's not confident that he can knock me out with anything. Uh, maybe he thinks Aegis Slash tanks this. Uh, he's clearly banded. So this should knock him out. Yeah. Maybe he thought he lived and he could get off another head smash. Um, Dracopult is hard walled. Mandibuzz is here all day doing this. We roost to ensure we're always healthy. There's no reason to predict. There's no reason to U-turn. There's no reason to do any of that. You know why? Because I have a Draco Vish and it's hungry. So we go hard Zard here for two reasons. Um, we can fire blast freely. Uh, even if we miss, that's okay. Uh, because Fishy is rend easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> you don't you're not you don't you're not neutral and live banded Fishy is rend. Look at this disappear. Look at this evaporate. Look at everybody evaporate. So I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to pull a double switch here. Um Again, doesn't make an ounce of difference. Not an ounce of difference. As uh, what I can do here is actually go to Zatu to finish this game because he's gonna Moonblast here, Life Orb. We take that. Um, actually, you know, plus two. Yeah, we'll tail in here and just end this game. Um, Vicious Rent sweeps. Another Draco Vish sweep. Another one. So I played. I'm really happy with how I played this this um, live. As I feel like without the Dynamax, it's it's just skill for skill. You you gotta play me, um, and this team sucks. You're just gonna get it twisted. It sucks. Well, I think maybe it doesn't suck as badly as I think, but it's definitely it's definitely not good. Um, and it certainly was a bad team when Dynamax was around. Uh, so maybe that's what it was. It's just not a Dynamax meta team, but all around, you know, it's decent. So. We're going to grab one last one. I'm going to give you guys a longer live today. Um, but are you afraid of being wrong? Hmm? When you go into a battle, do you get a, the thrill of potentially having a good game and winning? Or are you fearing losing the whole time? So, 
Last game, um, Toxapex, Darm, Corviknight, Hydreigon, Rotom. Really hard game. Really hard game because most of the games up to this point have been, you know, kind of Gastrodon massacres. But he has Toxapex, which can haze me or toxic me after I've cursed. Um, Ferrothorn, that can power whip me, obviously, or leech seed me. Um, Hydreigon, which I have to get low again, like I've described. And he has Rotom that can potentially burn me. So in this game, Gastrodon is not a sweeper. Now, it can sweep if like a lot of conditions are met but I'm not gonna go into the game the same way I go into the rest you gotta assess its subjective value in this game Gastrodon's role is better set as just the Rotom answer um, do I want to throw it in on will o not necessarily but that's more its role to so counter counter the counter setup versus um, Corviknight as well uh, I do have Zard for that but you know there's something to keep in mind so this is gonna be I'm gonna need to disrupt a lot of his defensive cores um, Corsola, let's do the left to right analysis. Corsola guards well against Darm, somewhat if it's not banded. And Corviknight, that's it. That is it. Um, Zatu actually plays a decent role in this game in the fact that it, it, it wards off the Toxapex, you know? Um, and if I can trick, which I feel like I'll be able to, I'll be able to trick at least his Ferrothorn um, and get up hazards. That will mean, assuming it's not heavy duty boots, Rotom, everything is going to be taking hazards, which is important. Darm, it's important that Darm and Rotom take hazards. And then Dracovish is going to be my main guy. Um, with Rocks up, Dracovish 2 it kills his entire team. Um, with Rocks up, Zard 2 it kills his entire team. Uh, maybe with Rotom. Um, and Mandibuzz's purpose in this one is just kind of to U turn out on a potential sub for Marjagon. Uh, but Dracovish. Zard and Corsola are my courses of action in this one. And um, to avoid Darm being annoying, um, which is why I have Protect on Zard, this actually wasn't a good play. I was supposed to lead with, this was actually a really foolish decision. So the fact that he switched out implies to me that he is a, that implies to me that he is a banded Darm Manhattan. He would not have switched or he's running to Scarvzards. Scarvzards could be a thing. So he wanted to scout for that. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna allow Gastrodon to get burnt because I could protect, so I don't think he's gonna Will-O-Wisp as he goes to Toxapex, a good mid ground. Um, okay, fair point, fair enough. So what I don't know what he won't do here. He won't go for, he won't go for Toxic Spikes. He may go for Scald, but he won't go for Toxic Spikes. So if he Scalds here, that means he has toxic spikes because he was anticipating my Zatu to come in. I'm gonna go to it. Doubles to Ferrothorn. I'm going to I'm going to go hard to Charizard here for one one main reason. I don't want him to know I have trick. He may have protect. If he shows protect here, then um I know he won't stealth rock. If he shows protect, then I know I have something to be concerned about. So I'm trying to Pry information without giving him too much information. It's important that I trick Ferrothorn specifically because that's his hazard mind. Now, Mandibuzz can defy, but Mandibuzz is not something I want in versus Darm. And what Zard does as well is if he double switches out to um, to Darmanitan here, um, I have the positional advantage. So he power whips, which means he doesn't have Gyro Ball. which means he doesn't fear me going for a trick or fear my Zatu at all, which is good information. So, um, gonna double back out into Zatu here, anticipating Toxapex to come out. Now that I've, oh, fuck, he went to Rotom, that's, ugh. So because I went Gastrodon last time, I'm fairly confident he's gonna go for something else. He's gonna go for will o -Wisp, most likely. Um, and I'm gonna kinda, how I'm, how I'm gonna counteract that is by going to my course. I know he won't Volt Switch. I don't want him tricking um, my Gastrodon. See Willow is there. We go. And now if he's choice, we're gonna find that out. And now we got Stealth Rocks up, and he can't get Rocks up. So he shows me he's not choice. He could still be heavy duty boots, but now when he comes, and he won't be able to come in all willy nilly on my Charizard. So that's huge. Um, very similar situation to last time. The only difference is this time I'm gonna go to my Mandibuzz initially. Now I'm expecting the nasty plot. Yup. Um, and we're gonna do is eat up whatever hit. We should take less than fifty or fifty five from whatever, unless it's Draco Meteor. 
and we're gonna be able to U-turn out here. I'm not sure why he hard switched. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that surprised me. Um, but this is excellent for you know who Dracovish which even if it doesn't get the two at KO um, on Toxapex, I know it's gonna murk Corviknight. So if he has had, he has no way to control hazards any longer. He's shown that he can't hit Zatu, which means I can utilize my trick and it doesn't have to be wasted on Corviknight. I want to catch the Ferrothorn. Um, so he gives me Corviknight. Dracovish was positioned. And remember, we needed Rocks up. And your boy just <laughs> was in his head. It was in his head. All right, so let me stop now. Um, but yeah, I never left that trailer thought. Yeah, I, you know, he left a comment as I wrap up the video. That's where we're going to end it today. And it, he was essentially saying, you know, um, are you quitting because, you know, are you quitting and leaving all this stuff as like one big, like hoopla, leave, you don't want to feel like it has been. And mind you, he didn't mean this in a malicious way. I think he was just, he's, he's been sub to me for about a week, so he's a newer sub, so he doesn't, you know, doesn't know me. But, um, you know, and, and again, usually there are a couple, quite a few like inconsistencies and it's kind of baseless statements, you know, kind of said things like, you know, psychology suggests you know what does that even technically mean psychology suggests are you referring to a study you know are you like quoting some chapter of a book it it just seemed like when somebody takes <clears throat> psych 101 as a freshman and now think they can read people's minds that's how the comments sounded um I, you know again i wasn't you know upset or you know it, it kind of reminded me of my i saw bits of me in the comment not me now Maybe maybe me now to a degree, but certainly a younger version um, and how I used to think and, you know, he was trying to analyze my motives and, you know, could it possibly be that you just want to give this stuff away? And yeah, you know, um, and I've been, my subs have given way more to me than I've given to them. I believe that. Um, I truly do. So to me, this isn't even the big, that's not even like... Like, I have a bigger purpose in, I'm competitive, I like playing against other people who are competitive, so rather than keep that information and live in fear, like, I'm going to fear you, I'm going to fear you being a threat to me, so I'm going to withhold information, I instead view it as, nah, fuck that, I'm not going to live in fear, that's a fear-based thing, I'm going to tell you what exactly you need to get to my level, and then I'm going to beat you. But then that's going to be a real opponent, real challenger. Um, so that's how I've, I've decided to view it. And, you know, he ended up deleting the comment. I don't know. I'm not sure what his reasoning. Maybe after the fact, he, you know, I just basically said to him, like, you know, I'm not going to go in on you. You know, you lack context. So your comment doesn't really hold any weight. Um, and... You know, just ask, because again, it, I saw bits of my old self in him, and I'm like, you know, just the way I got out of that thinking is just saying, what if I'm wrong? You know, and that's kind of part of the reason I inspired um, the beginning of this video. What if you're wrong? Are you afraid of being wrong? Is that a bad thing to get closer to the truth? Some people, yeah, it's a bad thing, but you know, it. Uh, cliche truth will set you free man and he did delete his comment um you know hopefully he didn't scare him off because again i didn't attack him i didn't know i'd him no uh no anything i never i didn't really even attack his thinking i, I didn't attack him in any way i just like just question yourself make sure you're not projecting yourself on me and yeah i am trying to give this shit away i'm still here not because i feel obligated to any of you but because I enjoy doing this, I like uploading, I like playing mods, I like sharing. What's better than that? <laughs> like, in a general sense. But, rambling aside, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, and again, great things coming. I'm going to start next week. I just got to get the GFX going. If you are a GFX king, please hit me up. I'm trying to do some work for free. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, hit me up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Go on Discord. Peace.